evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, Tuesday night prayer at the Family Word of Faith Family Church. Yes. Um, I've been listening a little bit to Billy Brim, and so um, she had Joshua Mills on as a guest the last, I don't know if, it, if those are pre, pre uh, done or not, but anyway, he's been on some of the, the things that she's had on TV, so she was talking a lot about uh, Kenneth uh, Hagen, some of his um, um, prophecies, and then she was talking about Tommy Hicks, and Tommy Hicks, I really didn't know who Tommy Hicks was. Um, I think probably if I did hear it before, then I um, I didn't remember him. So I started doing a little bit of um, googling and finding out who Tommy Hicks was and what and uh, what all I knew he was involved in an Argentina uh, revival. So anyway, I uh, printed off. Um, so I'm going to read a little bit about what happened in that Argentina. Um, some of it that happened in the revival that started in 1954. So he wasn't actually supposed to go to do that revival. They had, um, there was another, revival had broken, uh, had started in uh, one of the Bible schools, I think City Bell Bible School, and then a small church in Medosa. And so they had um, met together and they were calling in a bigger, uh, evangelist or a bigger person to come in um, to do this revival but he was not available and so they got in touch with Tommy Hicks and Tommy Hicks was a little known healing evangelist and um, so they sent him to Argentina and um, he so he went there and he um, had taught, he, he knew God had sent him there, and he was to hold uh, the meetings. And um, they would hold 25,000 people. And that's what, he, what God had told him was going to happen, that there would be, that he'd have to get a stadium for 25,000 people. And so when he, he, on the plane, but God also told him that he was to talk to a man by the name of Perrin. So on the plane while he was going to Argentina, he asked a stewardess, um, if she knew this person by the name of Perrin, and he was the president of that city of Peron. Uh, Peron. Was that? Peron. Peron, okay. Peron. Anyway, he was the president of Argentina. Yes. So, but, so he announced when he got there, there was a committee set up for this revival. And when he got there, he announced to them what was to take place. He was to meet with this Peron. He was to have a stadium for 25,000 people and um, what God had told him to do. And they sort of just laughed at him and said that's not going to happen. Because this president um, was against, he was very intolerable against uh, evangelicals, against the church. And he didn't cooperate very well. And no one even considered going to him to get permission to rent or to use these stadiums. And they told him right up front that it was gonna be utterly impossible for this to happen. And so at that point, revival was just very, it was very small and the evangelical churches were very, they weren't um, very acknowledgeable in, in revival. And actually a lot of them, I think, didn't even re really, really believe that there was revival, or they, they were, they had heard too much about revivals and stuff, so they, they weren't really expecting. Um, so anyway, he, he said what he was going to do. So he went um, with an interpreter, and he went to the where am I here? He went to where the the president would live, and I think. They called it um, the pink, the pink house, or it was. There's a name for it, I assume, in in the Argentine. And so he went there, and he took an interpreter with him. And when he got there, there was an armed guard there at the time, and he also acted as a porter. So he told him, he said, I. He asked him what he was there for, and he said, I'm here to meet with um, Mr. Peron. And he said, um, I, I want to request that we have a, um, 
a stadium booked for meetings. And so also going back a little bit, anything that was booked in those stadiums had to be approved by the government 60 days before anything took place. And then they were monitored and they were censored um, very closely. And uh, so anyway, he started talking to this, through the interpreter, to this, uh, this guard. And the guard looked at him and he said, do you think God can heal me? Because he was talking about God and healing services and whatnot. And he said, do you think he could heal me? And so Tommy Hicks said to him, so what, what is your problem? And he, he said that he had hepatitis and that his liver was bad. So, and, um, so he said to Tommy, he said, do you think that God would heal me? And so Tommy took him by the hand and he prayed and he was instantly healed, totally instantly healed. And he told Tommy, he said, when you come back tomorrow, and he said, I will have a meeting set up with, Dr. Or with Mr. Perron mm -hmm. to meet. So um, the next day he went back with his interpreter and they were escorted to the president's door. And the president greeted him and um, he asked him, you know, what his reason for coming was. And Pastor Hicks carefully explained to Perron the plan that they had for the city, for salvation, for healing crusade. And he carefully explained the way of salvation to of heal and healing to that president. And he asked for full rights for the evangelicals to meet in a stadium in arenas of the nation. So um, he was suffering it happened this, this Mr. Perron was also suffering from uh, a disease which was very painful and disfiguring his, his skin. And like, I, don't, I assume it was his whole body, but he was not able, as the president of, that, of Argentina, to have pictures taken because it was psoriasis and it, it was totally, uh, like his face was covered with it. So as he talked with this Tommy Hicks, he got very inquisitive and he said, do you think God would heal me? <laughs> you know, it's amazing. I mean, people had prayed for this, right? There was somebody praying for, and that, that's the basis of all of this, but there, there's been people praying and how God took, took Tommy Hicks, who was not supposed to even go to Argentina, and took him and told him specifically what was gonna happen and who he was supposed to talk to and how many people were going to be filling the stadiums and that God was going to move. And so he said, um, do you believe that Jesus heals today? And obviously this guy hadn't talked to the guard from the day before, right? And, um, and he said, um, where am I here? He said, no physician has been able to cure me. They have tried everything. And he said, it's got increasingly worse. And um, so he was listening and he said, uh, or did he just heal when he was here on earth? And so Tommy had the opportunity and he said, no, of course I believe he will heal you. And he took him by the hand and he prayed the prayer of faith over that president. And the power of God flowed into him and he staggered backwards. And when he looked, and they, and they were onlookers, his skin was totally, completely as a baby's skin. And, oh, and so he was totally healed. And he, this man said, and there was some of their language that it said, but he said, good heavens, my God, I am cured. And so that spoke to him, and I'm sure he became a Christian. It doesn't say that in this, in this but he gave him total freedom for the evangelical church in Argentina to do what they wanted to do. Um, the Atlantic Stadium was where they first went and it had seating capacity of 25,000 people. And when he went there, the evangelicals that were running or looking after this revival, they thought maybe 2,500 would be too many. So um, from the first crowds, they were small, but God manifested his mighty power. And, be, and larger and larger crowds began to appear Ushers were soon working 12-hour shifts, and the bleachers were occupied hours 
before the event. Like, can't you just see this in the spirit that this is going to happen yeah. in, yes. in our city and in, in our country and yes. in your nations? Um, so many people had to remain outside that they had to put speakers and strung up all kinds of lights and stuff outside so that people could listen from outside. And they were, the streets and the sidewalks were filled for blocks around. Thousands were healed and saved under the simple preaching and prayers of this Tommy Hicks. He simply prayed from the platform and asked people to raise their hands inside and out of that stadium um, and people came weeping as the power of God surged. I mean, he was a simple preacher, and he just preached the word, and he yes. prayed, and God um, miraculously healed, and there were people that came out of wheelchairs, crutches, people could see. Um, Celia the Great um, Hur Hurricane Stadium, which held 60,000 people, so they had to move from 25,000 to the 60,000 and they rented that and it was filled to capacity. God was moving and his plan for Argentina was unfolding. The enemy had ruled over the land and kept the church ineffective and never would Satan rule again. The gospel was making an enorm enormous and lasting impact in the nation of 20 million people. Then he talks a little bit about um, people that came. And then there was a child that's three years old that was able to walk and with heavy steel braces. And when he prayed the prayer of faith, the mother took off the braces and that child ran up and down the aisles. <laughs> Crowds began to weep and to shout. Faith rose and spontaneous miracles began to happen. A 20-year-old man was brought on a stretcher who had never walked before. And the power of God flowed through him. He got up off of that stretcher. He ran all the way home, <laughs> left his stretcher there, came back the next night and told them that he was totally healed. Thank you, Lord. Uh, there was a public there was a publisher that was healed that had varicose veins and hemorrhoids and rheumatism. And God just miraculously touched it. Like people Thousands and thousands and thousands of people were being healed. A demon-possessed woman that was, they prayed over her and the demons left her and she was set free. Blind people, lame people. Um, there was a doctor that came with a sister and he, um, the sister was vice president of Bolivia and um, she had two boys that she brought with her that were considered incurable and had suffered much. And both boys were healed at once. And the doctor who attended them saw both of them um, running as any normal child. That doctor ran to Tommy on his knees and he embraced Pastor uh, Hicks's legs. And he looked up with tears falling down his cheeks and cried, tell me about your God. I want this God. I want this Jesus. I can serve a God that will do this for little children. Argentina rocked under the impact of, of Hicks's healing crusade. On the topic on every tongue was the crusade. When a critic, a critic would speak against the healing, 10 people would stand up and speak against, you know, speak for the healings and what was happening. Hundreds of people abandoned careers to start healing ministries in Argentina and they were flooded with faith warriors that could not be stopped. And ends it and says, oh, children of the living God, can we impact our country like this? We need to pray, pray, pray until the power comes into our land. Faith to perform the miraculous is at the hand of the Father, and he only gives it out to those who trust to use it for his glory. And I thought of that, uh, use it for his glory. What Pastor was speaking about on Sunday night and how we give him all the glory and all the praise for everything that happens. Like that wasn't Tommy Hicks that did all that. That was God. Amen. And God uses and will use and does use every one of us. And every one of us can do those things that Tommy Hicks did. Amen. Just simply by praying and speaking the word and just telling people
people and, and the miraculous it draws people. It uh, people need that. And I was telling this story actually to my boss on the way home because she likes she knows I speak on Tuesday nights and she was asking me what I was gonna be talking about. So I relate that it gives me an opportunity, right? You know, and so um, not only here, but it, it has opened a door there. And so I, t I tell her, and, and I simply just tell her how it is and what God's gonna do and what he's doing and what he will do. And so we just need to keep faithful and pray, pray and pray because we're on the, we're on the verge of, of a mighty breakthrough. And, and um, there is, um, and I'm not going to read this, but I went on to find this Tommy Hicks End Times Vision. Yeah. And if anybody has never read that, it, you should read it because it, it's, quite, it's quite the vision. And God, I think, showed that to him, what, three times in, in one night? Was it in one night? Anyway, it is, and I guess that's what Billy Graham was talking about to start with, was the Tommy Hicks prophecy. So anyway, it, um, it, if you're interested, I can give you copies or whatever, but... How long would it take you to read it? Um, it's four pages. So... Okay. <coughs> okay, the following is a stunning vision, a stunning vision given to American preacher Tommy Hicks. So it says, My message begins July 25th, about 2.30 in the morning at Winnipeg, Canada. I had hardly fallen asleep when the vision and the revelation that God gave me come before me. The vision came three times, exactly in detail, the morning of July 25th, 1961. I was so stirred and so moved by the revelation that this has changed my complete outlook upon the body of Christ and upon the end time ministries. The greatest thing that the Church of Jesus Christ has ever given lies straight ahead. It is so hard to help men and women to realize and understand the thing that God is trying to give his people in the end times. I received a letter several weeks ago from one of our native evangelists down in Africa, in Nairobi. This man and his wife were on their way to a, a, a place that I'm not gonna try to um, say, and they could neither read nor they could neither write, but they had been, we had been supporting them for two years. As they entered into the territory, they came across a small village, and the entire village was evacuating because of a plague that had hit that village. He came across natives that were weeping, and he asked them what was wrong. They told him of their mother and father who had suddenly died, and they had been dead for three days. They had to leave. They were afraid to go in. They were leaving them in the cottage. He turned and asked them where they were, and they pointed to the hut, and he asked them to go with him, but they refused. They were afraid to go. The native and his wife went to this little cottage and entered in where the man and woman had been dead for three days. He simply stretched forth his hand in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he spoke the, name, the man's name and the woman's name and said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command life to come back to your bodies. Mind you, these people had been dead for three days. Instantaneously, these two heathen people who had never known Jesus Christ as their Savior sat up and immediately began to praise God. And the spirit and the power of God came into the life of all those people. To us, that may seem strange and a phenomenon, but that is the beginning of these end time ministries. God is going to take the do-nothings, the nobodies, the unheard of, the no accounts, and he's going to take every man and every woman and he's going to give them, give to them this outpouring of the Spirit of God. In the book of Acts, we read in the last days, God said, I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. And I wonder if we realize what he meant when God said, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. I do not think I fully realized, nor could I understand the fullness of it until I, that I read in the book of Joel, be glad then, ye children of Zion, Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, the latter rain. It is not only going to be the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain, but he is going to give to his people in these last days a double portion of the power of God. As the vision appeared to me after I was asleep, I suddenly found myself in a high 
just in a great high distance where I was and I do not know. But I was looking down upon the earth and suddenly the whole earth came into my view. Every nation, every kindred, every tongue came before my sight from the east, the west, the north and the south. And I recognized every country and many cities that I had been in. And I was almost in fear and trembling as I beheld the great sight before me. And at that moment, when the world came into view, it, it began to lighten and thunder. As the lightning flashed over the face of the earth, my eyes went downward and I was facing the north. Suddenly, I beheld what looked like a great giant. And as I stared and looked at it, I was almost bewildered by the sight. It was so gigantic and so great. His feet seemed to reach to the North Pole and his head to the South. His arms were stretched from sea to sea and I could not even begin to understand whether this be a mountain or this be a giant. But as I watched, I suddenly beheld a great giant. I could see his head was struggling for life. He wanted to live, but his body was covered with debris from head to foot. And at times this great giant would move his body and act as though it would even raise up at times. And when it did, thousands of little creatures seemed to run away. Hideous creatures would run away from this giant, and when he would become calm, they would come back. All of a sudden, this great giant lifted his hands toward heaven. Then he lifted the other hand. And when it did, these creatures by the thousands seemed to flee from this giant and go into the darkness of night. Slowly, this great giant began to rise, and as he did, his head and his hands went into the clouds. As he rose to his feet, he seemed to have cleansed himself from debris and the filth that was upon him, and he began to raise his hands into the heavens as though praising the Lord. And as he raised his hands, they went even into the clouds. Suddenly, every cloud became silver, the most sil beautiful silver I had ever known. And as I watched this phenomenon, it was so great, I could not even begin to understand what it all meant. I was so stirred as I watched it, and I cried unto the Lord and said, O oh Lord, what is the meaning of this? And I felt as if I was actually in the spirit, and I could feel the presence of the Lord even though I was asleep. And those clouds suddenly became great drops of liquid light raining down upon this mighty giant. And slowly, slowly, this giant began to melt. He began to seep into the very earth itself. And as he melted, his whole form seemed to have melted upon the face of the earth. And this great rain began to come down. Liquid drops of light began to flood the very earth itself. And as I watched this giant that seemed to melt, suddenly it became millions of people all over the face of the earth. And as I beheld the sight before me, people stood up all over the world. They were lifting their hands. They were praising the Lord. That very moment, there came a great thunder that seemed to roar from the heavens. I turned my eyes toward the heavens, and suddenly I saw a figure in white, in glistening white, the most glorious thing that I had ever seen in my entire life. I did not see the face, but somehow I knew it was the Lord. And he stretched forth his hand, and as he did, he would stretch it forth to one, to another, to another. And as he stretched forth his hand upon the nations and the people of the world, men and women, as he pointed toward them, this liquid light seemed, seemed to flow from his hands unto them. And a mighty anointing of God came upon them. And those people began to go forth in the name of the Lord. I do not know how long I watched. It seemed it went into days and weeks and months. And then I beheld this Christ as he continued to stretch forth his hand, but there was a tragedy. There were many people as he stretched forth his hand that refused the anointing of God and the call of God. I saw men and women that I knew, people that I felt would certainly receive the call of God, but as he stretched forth his hand toward this one and toward that one, they simply bowed their head and began to walk away. And each of those that seemed to bow down and back away seemed to go into the darkness. Blackness seemed to swallow them everywhere. I was bewildered as I watched it, but these people that he had anointed, hundreds of thousands of people all over the world, every country, Africa, England, Russia, China, America, all over the world, the anointing of God was upon these people as they went forward in the name of the Lord. And I saw these men and women as they went forth, and they were dip diggers, they were washerwomen, 
They were rich men, they were poor men, and I saw people who were bound with paralysis, sickness, blindness, deafness. As the Lord stretched forth to giving them this anointing, they became well, and they became healed, and they went forth. And this is the miracle of it all. This is the glorious miracle of it. Those people would stretch forth their hands exactly as the Lord did. And it seemed as if there was some liquid fire in their hands. And as they stretched forth their hands, they said, according to my word, be thou made whole. And as these people continued in this mighty end time ministry, I did not fully realize what it was. And I looked to the Lord and said, what is the meaning of this? And he said, this is that which I will do in the last days. I will restore all the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar, will restore all that have been destroyed. This, my people, in the end times will go forth as a mighty army, shall they sweep over the face of the earth. As I was at this great height, I could behold the whole world. I watched these people as they were going to and fro over the face of the earth. Suddenly, there was a man in Africa, and in a moment he was transported by the Spirit to, of God and perhaps he was in Russia, or China, or America, or some other place, and vice versa. All over the world these people went, and they came through fire, through pestilence, through famine. Neither fire nor persecution, nothing could stop them. Angry mobs came to them with swords and guns, and like Jesus, they passed through the multitudes, and they could not be found. But they went forth in the name of the Lord. Everywhere they stretched forth their hands, the sick were healed, the blind eyes were open. There was not a long prayer, and after I reviewed the vision many times in my mind and thought about it many times, I realized that I never saw a church, and I never saw or heard a denomination, but these people were going in the name of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. As they marched forth in everything they did as the ministry of Christ in the end times, these people were, were ministering to the multitudes over the face of the earth. Tens of thousands, millions seemed to come to Jesus as these people stood forth and gave the message of the kingdom, of the coming kingdom. In this last hour, it was so glorious, it seemed as though there were those that rebelled and they would become angry and they tried to attack those workers that were giving the message. God is going to give the world a demonstration in this last hour as the world has never known. These men and women are of all walks of life. Degrees will mean nothing. I saw workers as they were going over the face of the earth. When one would stumble and fall, another would come and pick them up. There was no big eyes and little U's, but every mountain was brought low and every valley was exalted. And they seemed to have one thing in common. There was a divine love, a divine love that seemed to flow from these people as they walked, worked together and as they lived together. It was the most glorious sight that I've ever known. Jesus Christ was a theme of their life. They continued and it seemed the days went by as I stood and beheld the sight, I could only cry. And sometimes I laughed. It was so wonderful that these people went throughout the face of the whole earth bringing forth in the last end time. As I watched from the very heaven itself, there were times when great deluges of this liquid light seemed to fall upon great congregations. And that congregation will lift up their hands and seemingly praise God for hours and even days as the Spirit of God came upon them. God said, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. And that is exactly the, the thing. And to every man and to every woman that received this power, the anointing of God, the miracles of God, there was no ending to it. We have talked about miracles, we have talked about signs and wonders, but I could not help but weep as I read again this morning at four o'clock, the letter from our native workers. This is only the evidence of the beginning for one man, a do nothing and unheard of, who could go and stretch forth his hand and say in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command life to come into your body. I dropped to my knees and began to pray again and said, Lord, I know this time is coming soon. And then again, as these people were going about to face the earth, a great persecution seemed to come from every angle. Suddenly there was a great clap of thunder and there seemed to resound around the world and I heard again the voice, the voice that seemed to speak, now this is my people, this is my beloved bride. And when the voice spoke, I looked upon the earth and I could see the lakes and the mountains, the graves were opened, the people from all over the world, the saints of all ages seemed to be rising and as they rose from the graves, suddenly all these people came from every direction 
from the east, the west, the north, the south, and they seemed to be forming again this gigantic body. As the dead in Christ seemed to be rising first, I could hardly comprehend it. It was so marvelous. It was so beyond anything I could ever dream or think of. But as this body suddenly began to form the lake and take shape, it took shape again in the form of this mighty giant. But this time it was different. It was arrayed in the most beautiful, gorgeous white. Its garments were without spot or wrinkle as its body began to form. And the people of all ages seemed to be gathered into this body and slowly, slowly as it began to form up into the very heavens, suddenly from the heavens above the Lord Jesus came and became the head. And I heard another clap of thunder that said, this is my beloved bride for whom I have waited. She will come forth, even tried by fire. This is she that I have loved from the beginning of time. As I watched, my eyes suddenly turned to the far north, and I saw seemingly destruction. Men and women in anguish and crying out, and buildings in destruction. Then I heard again the fourth voice that said, Now is my wrath being poured up out upon the face of the earth. From the ends of the whole earth, the wrath of God seemed to be poured out, and it seemed that there was a great vase of God's wrath being poured out upon the face of the earth. I can remember it as though it happened a moment ago. It shook, I shook and trembled as I beheld the awful sight of seeing the cities and nations going into destruction. I could hear the weeping and the wailing, and I could hear people crying. They seemed to cry as they went into caves, but the caves and the mountains opened up. They leaped into water, but the water would not drown them. There was nothing that could destroy them. They were wanting to take their lives, but they could not. Then again, I turned my eyes to this glorious sight, this body arrayed in beautiful white shining garments. Slowly, slowly, it began to lift from the earth, and as it did, I awoke. What a sight I had beheld. I had seen the end time ministries this last hour. Again, on July 27th at 2.30 in the morning, the same revelation, the same vision came again exactly as it did before. My life has been changed as I realize that we're living in the end time. For all over the world, God is anointing men and women in this ministry. It, it will not be doctrine. It will not be churchianity. It's going to be Jesus Christ. They will give forth the word of the Lord and are going to say, I heard it so many times in the vision. According to my word, shall it be done. Amen. So 